Now let's move on to cyclic accelerators, the first type of which is the Betatron or cyclic induction accelerator. The idea of such an accelerator was put forward by Rolf Widerow in 1924, but the first working Betatron was built more than a dozen years later. In this picture you can see Donald Kirst next to his two Betatrons. The energy of the smaller Betatron was 2.3 mega electron volts and that of the larger one 25 mega electron volts. A Betatron is an electron beam accelerator. Its operating principle is similar to an ordinary transformer. It is an iron core with a primary winding twined around it. Through it, an electric current of either 50 Hz or 10 kHz is conducted. An electron beam, which is accelerated in the gap of this magnet core, may be interpreted as a secondary winding. The electron beam undertakes several million revolutions during the acceleration time. There is a direct relation between the number of revolutions to the number of coils of the primary winding, resulting in an increase in energy when compared to the supply voltage. Before radio frequency resonant accelerators were invented, a Betatron was considered as one of the instruments of high energy physics. After the charged particle energy had been significantly increased with the help of other accelerators, Betatrons found their place in various technological applications. Today, a wide variety of Betatrons are commercially produced, which are used for non-destructive testing. For instance, for radiographic inspection of the walls of nuclear reactors and for checking the armor of naval cruisers for defects. From their ranks, one may, for example, emphasize the stereo Betatron, which combines two accelerators in one facility. The X radiation beams at a low angle, making it possible not only to determine the position of the defect in the examined material, but also its depth. The main limitation of a Betatron, which, perhaps, makes it less attractive for an array of research, is the beam intensity. It is due to the fact that, at the beginning of an acceleration, the magnetic field accelerating and simultaneously rotating the beam has a low magnitude. To account for this limitation, it was suggested in 1943 to introduce an additional magnetic field which would perform beam focusing at low energies. The assumption was that it would make it possible to raise the current level in such a Betatron to the value of 1 mega ampere. The development of these accelerators lasted quite long. The only representative of this family of accelerators which was relatively successful, was created in the United States under the leadership of a Greek physicist named Kapitanakos. The bending magnetic field generated by an electric vortical field was created by two windings. Additional windings of a toroidal field were mounted around the vacuum chamber. The vacuum chamber was twined with another spiral quadrupole winding, thus providing stability of beam acceleration. It actually fixed the equilibrial orbit around which the beam was accelerated. A beam of about 900 amperes and only 16 mega electron volt energy was obtained at this accelerator. This means the modified Betatron fell short of its expectations. However, today at the Joint Institute for nuclear research, there is, I believe, the only lab in the world that has an active accelerator of the modified Betatron kind. It is located at the Jelyapov Laboratory of Nuclear Problems. Its main objective is not to obtain high current electron beams, but rather to accumulate positrons and generate such exotic atoms as positroniums. It is a bound state of an electron and a positron. 
In the future, generation of anti-hydrogen atoms in flight will also be possible. Today, this accelerator is used for positron annihilation spectroscopy and the accumulator itself, the modified betatron, is used for the optimization of electron beam dynamics.